such that the nature of our work, let me establish that it is part of the supply chain system. Mm. In the supply chain system, one of the key things that they rely heavily on is just in time mm. concept. That cargo will have to move at, uh, on time. Mm. People will have to order it to arrive on time. Mm. So the owners of the vessels, they also make sure that uh, their vessels are moved on time. Now, those uh, lawyers and the ship owners and the charters, that they have access to charter party documents. I mean, charter party is a document that covering the chartering of a vessel. Mm. There's a clause in it we call voyage charter or time charter. Mm. This thing called for demorage on a vessel. Some people are only aware of a demorage having two container. Container, uh, demorage is one aspect, but mm. we have a demorage on the vessel also. Mm. So therefore, that um, how can this problem be solved? It is what Dr. Atwali said. If the authorities are able to appreciate that any time a vessel comes to port, that vessel, let's assume that it's on time charter. It has to work and go as soon as possible. That is where people will be alerted to make sure that uh, the, the vessel is worked. Necessary approvals are given early for us to work. Mm -hmm. But if that understanding is not there, people will not see the value. Like, oh, it's a normal application it has brought. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that let's take our time to work on it. But meanwhile, you see, there are instances where vessel could be asked that uh, stop the shot of cargo, so ship all the rest and move. Mm -hmm. This could happen as a result of time. And if people don't get it, the proving authority don't actually get the understanding and appreciate it very well to make sure that uh, they, they, they actually give the quick uh, approval as soon as uh, the documents are put before them. Mm -hmm. We are not saying that they shouldn't put the checks and balances. Those things should be there. Yeah. But if it's unduly delayed, it affects the vessel. Right. So that is one thing that I want to make clear. All right. Yeah. Okay, so this is our report here on Metropolitan Television. And tonight, we are discussing the provision of uh, efficient port reception facilities in line with international uh, standards. Uh, we are telling you the Ghana story so far. And our focus is on the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships. That's MAPO 7378. We'll be back after this short break. Please stay. Every now and again, Goil makes good things happen. This time, Goil has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goil Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goal Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Cellful. It doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Sterling, my goods are on the IC covered with the marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now
All right, so you're welcome back. Let me move straight to Mr. Gezi and find out from you the level of commitment of the Port Authority in terms of uh, trying to help reduce pollution from ships. Um, there are those who believe that the Port Authority is only interested in profits and not what happens to the environment. Um, I don't think that was, that's a good uh, uh, opinion of the, the way we've handled it so far. Mm. If, if you look at the way we started and the consultations that we did, and even determining the, 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 the fees to be charged, we look at the cost in receiving the waste, transporting to the facility, treatment and disposal. Mm. The cost is just to, to, to the, the, the fee they pay is just to handle the cost of handling the waste right. and disposal. Mm. There was no profit element in it. So mm. the port is not even benefiting from this. Mm. We, we, we selected to do, we could have elected to do it ourselves, yeah. but we elected to Subletted. concession it to private uh, operators too. Mm. So they have to put up uh, infrastructure, equipment, and other things to handle this waste. Mm. So it's not true that uh, we, we, we... You care less about the environment. Aspect. But to, to ensure that we, we achieve the, mm. the objective of reducing mm. or minimizing um, uh, 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 mm. uh, pollution by vessels, mm. all the companies that were giving them the concession were I'm, asked... I'm not, I'm not talking about Ghana's, Ghana alone. I'm talking about all the other ports within the Yes, South I'm region, talking about the Ghana situation. Yes. The Ghana situation. Okay. The Ghana situation. We, yeah. we ensure that each, each one of them mm. did an environmental impact assessment. assessment yeah. And obtain a permit from EPA. Mm. In that way, EPA will be directly following, following the processes mm. to ensure that the collection, the handling, the treatment, and disposal follow the waste regulations of the, the national waste regulations. Right. But EPA has a, a waste regulation policy mm. regulation. Various assemblies have their own waste regulation and uh, policy. So each of them will have to uh, obtain uh, permits from. So EP can monitor their processes to ensure that they comply with all these regulations. Right. Okay. All right. So let me come to uh, Dr. Barnes and uh, uh, find out from you how the IMO ensures compliance of the MAPO Convention across, uh, you know, uh, the globe. Yes. Uh, of course, the convention is the uh, IMO's baby, mm. and uh, as, as usual with uh, uh, international conventions different countries approach it in different ways mm. and also even for developing countries it becomes more difficult mm. because even to understand the text have the uh, human capital to, to, to implement it and then also financial and other resources for example becomes a problem mm. but what IMO has uh, basically is that for each of the annexes there are regulations mm. as to how we have to be handled for example, if you take, um, I think I did some notes here. Yeah. If you take Annex 1, for, for instance, mm. IMO demands mandatory ship service and inspections. So that would ensure that the ships, ships have the facilities mm. to hold uh, uh, waste in ways that has to be done. Right. And then also where uh, tankers and vessels, or both of them, depend upon the, the, the gross tonnage, tonnage of the vessels, they also have to obtain international oil pollution certificates. So without it, you cannot travel. You have this uh, certificate over a certain given period of time. You have to go back for survey and then get it uh, renewed or mm. withdrawn. Mm. They also have uh, also oil record book, for example. So yeah. ships have to keep all these books and they can be verified. Mm. If you get to Annex 2 also, uh, they kind of also have categorization of all the nutritious liquid substances mm. and then also a cargo record book as well. There are several things, but uh, I just have to jump this. Right. But also mandatory ship service as well. If you get to an X3, also they indicate what constitutes a, 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 a mm. nutritious mm. substance in packaged mm. form, but that is basically comes under the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. Mm. So all those uh, uh, chemicals there and the substances there are listed and you have to comply with them. Mm. And then they have regulations on how these must be packaged. They have regulations on how they should be marked and labeled and how they should be documented as mm. well. 
and also even how it is stored on board the vessels mm. like that. You get to an X4 for sewage is the same also. Ships will have to get a certification of international sewage pollution prevention certificate, mm. and therefore that they are mandated to whatever, and then also re regulations on how sewage can be discharged. Right. If you get to an X5, it's also the same thing, also procedures on how disposal has to be done, and then what happens in certain sensitive areas, special areas, mm. and then also a garbage uh, record book that has to document everything that's on board, mm. how it had to be handled, where it was discharged, where the vessel next is going, and mm. all these kind of things. And then an SX also that looks at atmospheric pollution also. Those have standards that mm. defines the emission that is permitted and what is not, and then uh, uh, also especially for nitrogen oxides and the uh, sulfur oxides it has to be completely taken off. And then also uh, how to even do installation on, on, on board, but also the quality of fuel that ships are using. So all these regulations are there for each of the annexes, mm. and that's how best they can they do it. And then uh, they also, for them also, the, the national um, competent institutions, like mm. in Ghana, the Ghana Maritime yeah. Authority, for example, stands in to ensure mm. that all these regulations are complied with mm. the vessels that are coming into the port. So right. through this, and then they have to report back also to the IMO, IMO so there's this loop of uh, getting uh, feedback each time. Right. So, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right, Mr. Adi, let me yes. find out from you what the level of collaboration between yourselves and uh, other stakeholders, uh, you know, in this business is uh, in terms of uh, trying to effectively and efficiently uh, play a role. Of, uh, you know, no, thank you very much. Uh, the collaboration first starts with uh, GPH mm. because uh, they are the licensor. Yeah. We are the licensee. They give us the concession. Yes. So we see them as our principals. Yeah. For us, as our parents, we have a good collaboration with them. Mm. They have a, a lot of uh, 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 people, I mean layers. If this one is not working, you only follow this one. Mm. Particularly if you call the data or port, every time I have an issue, I call the data or port. If you're able to get here, maybe I call Habo Master or I call Mr. Gezi himself, and somebody will quickly attend. Mm. Then with customs. The customs, it exists, but it doesn't exist much. Mm. It exists, but it doesn't exist much. Particularly with on weekends. Customs. Yes, with customs. Okay. It exists, but it doesn't exist much. Mm. Particularly with uh, weekends, mm. we just establish that vessels move on time. Mm. Owners, charters make sure that uh, the cargo work will have to be done on time. Mm. But when you reach weekends, it is very, very difficult. And that is where we have a major challenge. Mm. So, talking about the collaboration with them, and in the past, we used to also have a, a, a somehow difficult challenges with national security. Right. But now, with the appreciation of what we do, they've come to understand that, uh, oh, look, we are not doing anything as people perceive. Yeah. I mean, something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. We are doing normal thing. Mm -hmm. So our collaboration with them is much. So now the little challenge that we have in terms of a marginal collaboration mm -hmm. is actually with customs. Okay. I believe that with time, you they also come to actually this thing. So I would say that uh, on, on, the, on the average, we, 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 we have a marginal collaboration <laughs> which are going, <laughs> yeah, going forward. All right. Yeah, everybody <laughs> will, will, will actually, you know, and actually be on our side. Okay, so that so together we move. Because you see, this is an opportunity for us to project the image of the country globally mm. to the shipping community. Yeah. On the average, if we have about 100 ships mm. coming to Tamaport, mm. on the average, mm. and all of them are discharging with and uh, all the MAPO companies are issuing certificates. Yeah. And these reports are all getting to the decks of IMO. Yeah. IMO will get to know that. Uh, Ghana ports, it's for that matter, plan, Ghana yeah. ports, is actually doing very well mm. in protecting the marine environment. Mm. So it is a national something. Yeah. I've been it is a national something. Mm. And the convention is also backing it. Mm. As of now, I don't know for sure, like a doc said, whether uh, it has been domesticated or nationalized has, or whatever it, it, it is. It has, it has, that yes. is one thing. Yes. He says it has, yes. it has been domesticated. Yes. Okay. Okay. I know for GMA law, yeah, I know for GMA law, there are some provisions in GMA laws. Mm. That there, there, there is a national regulation yeah. national so, that act on marine pollution. So it is up to those authorities to, for them to appreciate it. Mm. I them, but the mm. understanding and awareness, yeah. knowing that this is a global something, yeah. this is an international shipping community something, mm. that's that's area where we need to work on. And then secondly, we have um, uh, uh, the, actual, the regional ports. Mm. We have uh, Lagos there, yeah. we have uh, Benin, yeah. we have Lome, yeah. we have Abidjan, yeah. we have San Pedro, yeah. we have uh, uh, actually Liberia, mm. and so on. Yeah. All these ports, by doing this efficiently mm. in the way we are telling in the international community that uh, Tema should be a preferred destination yeah. when it comes to waste uh, and, 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 and yeah. be compared to all of them. Mm. Have you seen it? Because our certificates are going. Yeah. Have you seen it? Right. And then the next thing has to do with uh, our local empowerment of the port reception facility companies. Mm. When they give you the license, there's an honors on you yeah. to make sure that you deliver. Mm. 
-hmm. because you have been made to understand that this is becoming international something, international right. something. So therefore, that you must do your homework very well. I mean, mm -hmm. house cleaning mm -hmm. for you, for us to make sure that uh, we do as expected of us. Right. So when we talk of a collaboration, collaboration should not only be external, mm -hmm. but it should be internal and within internal also as well. Mm -hmm. We collaborate uh, with the international community. Mm -hmm. We collaborate uh, with uh, our national authorities, and then within the MAPO companies themselves. Because there are some situations when the vessel has to be uh, discharged, uh, the waste has to be discharged for the mm -hmm. vessel to go. The map, within the MAPO companies, the driver is nowhere to be found. The, the, the other guy is also nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Which means, therefore, that there's an internal issue yeah. that needs to be solved. Yeah. So if the authority gives you license, you must know that they, they have given some responsibility on you. Mm -hmm. The work that they are supposed to do is what they have actually given it to you for yeah. you to do yeah. for, on their behalf. Yeah. So, therefore, that uh, you must make sure that uh, you have also prepared your house very well to mm -hmm. enable you to do that. Absolutely. So that uh, that collaboration that should exist between the two of you, yeah. you and the, uh, the, the, you, the licensee, yeah. and the licensor, so mm -hmm. that will continue to be there. Sure. So together, we will move the nation forward. All right. Thank you. you mentioned average, and I just want to find out from you the average time you spend in dealing with one ship, working on one ship. Um, that would depend. For, uh, yeah, for instance, let me take a place like MPS, mm. the new terminal. Yes. When you go there to go and take a waste from the vessel, mm. after you have done what you call the pre-logistics, mm. pre-logistics are for yes, the you it, yeah. Yes, you have gotten all your approvals and other things, you go there. The crane position, mm. where you have your connection to tap, mm. maybe there's a, 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 a actual machine there. Mm. I mean, the gantry crane is there. Yeah. They, their interest is on the cargo to be discharged. Yes. They need to understand and yes. appreciate yes. that once these people have come, yeah. Can we move to B3 or B4? Mm. So everybody is supposed to work and then they go so that we move there. Yeah. They will not okay. because the understanding and appreciation is not there. So you can't get access? You cannot get access. Okay, to the it. So okay. in this one, do you expect me to say I have a good collaboration with them? I've seen it now. Okay. Till the understanding and awareness mm. is heightened. Okay. And everybody understands that, look, the woman this person comes here, he has an agenda. Yeah. Let's see how best we can create an opportunity yeah. for him so to be work. So a win-win for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. I've listened it now. Because they have, have seen a situation where a vessel has discharged. And the vessel says, I will not see. Because my waist is on board. Yeah. I will not see. Yeah. So now, what have you done? Yeah. If there's understanding, yeah. you have shifted. Yeah. Then we have been able to work. Mm. By the time we finish, within one hour, you get the clearance from the authority. And then off, you're, you're it's right. But now you have finished the cargo work. You're spending some hours in your port again for that mm. thing to be done. Because without it, you cannot save. Yeah. All when right. So in the, in, the event, in, the event that, in the event that everything is smooth, you have access to the vessel, and you are supposed to work, it's being, uh, the cargo is being discharged, and you're also doing your work. What is the, the length of time you, you, you take? Oh, to, to that also on depends the upon the pumping capacity, I mean, the pumping rate mm. of the vessel. Mm. We don't use for rigs avoidance. Mm. We don't use our own pump. Okay. It is the ship that has to use a home pump. Okay. So if they have a good pump, within one hour, two hours, you finish. Okay. But if you don't have a good pump, it can take you seven hours, 12 hours. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes even 24 hours. hours. Wow. And now the situation that the Port Authority, through the approval system, mm. have indicated that uh, we are supposed to work only from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. It's also a challenge. Yeah. So you need to go back to them again to well, seek for federal authorization that they uh, look, this is what I'm doing, this is uh, what I'm coming up. Yeah, yeah. So what should I do? Then they'll tell you, okay, now, we said six to six, but now we have given you extension. You yeah. need to do that because you need to be a very compliant entity yeah. as well. Okay. Right. Let me Kent, talk to, Kent, yes, Kent, I think, uh, let me come in. I think this is the main reason why we started that 14 October collaboration, yes. stakeholders meeting, yeah. to commence this partnership yeah to explain to all the key stakeholders why we need to expedite action on or the service delivery on this MAPO services. Yes. And at that meeting, you could appreciate that uh, those stakeholders who came appreciated the issues yeah. and they are willing to work together. Yeah. We've started with um, uh, customs already. We'll try to engage uh, GMA. Right. Because customs initially did not see uh, the reason to interfere with these processes. Mm. So we're not going through the authorization processes like they do now. Yeah. I never heard about anybody going to custom uh, commissioner at all yeah. for authorization, never. It was recent, this one's very, very recent. Right. So we're trying to engage them to ensure that uh, we can cut off some of the processes. Mm. Then also, he mentioned uh, MPS. Yeah. We'll try to engage MPS to ensure that they, they, they give access to uh, the operators to provide these services on time. Mm. So that, because there was a mail sent me last week about uh, 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 
uh, service provider who was called several times mm. to be allocated a vessel and he was not appearing. Mm. Apparently, he was not getting his approvals. Yeah. So these things delay vessels, and we are very conscious of that. We will take steps to, to, to engage the various stakeholders. Mm. Like he says, national security seems to appreciate now, so yeah. the interference has Reduced. gone down. Yeah. We need to do with the other ones as yeah. well. So right. we'll, we'll continue doing that. Okay. Just a quick one. Um, does the Port Authority have uh, these capa this capacity uh, in terms of uh, reception facilities? Kennedy, if we had decided to do this service ourselves, we would have built the capacity to do right. it. But during the inception of this project, we, we were mindful of the government's uh, uh, decision to uh, um, to bring private, yeah, public private, uh, public -private, sure. private -private Not partnership yeah. into port operations. Yeah. Yeah. So we decided to to let it go to the private sector. Sure. So, so it, it's incumbent sector, on them to build their capacity. Yeah, the to private sector will have to build their capacity. And, yeah. and like uh, Doc said, mm. this uh, equipment that they need to acquire to to set up a facility yeah. is require huge capital outlay. Yeah, absolutely. If you see the facility yeah. provided by Zill. Yeah. It's comparable to any facility in the world. Mm. We will need such facilities all over uh, the country. Right, right. Tema we need to, EcoStar started, and we need to encourage them yeah. to, to, to provide um, uh, uh, the facilities that will meet all the standards required by uh, IMO, IMO to right. operate. Right. And okay. they also have to register with IMO to, to be certified. Uh, to operate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we have barely three minutes to go, Doc. I just want to find out from you whether there are any punitive actions or, you know, uh, measures taken against intransigent or non-compliant, you know, uh, ports. And also, what you would like to see going forward as, as, you know, in our ports here in Ghana, as far as this issue is concerned? Um, the MAPO Convention is clear. Mm. So, of course, the punitive sanctions goes to the ships. Mm. Uh, and so uh, if, if ships do not comply the way they have to, yeah. there are punitive measures for them, and right. there could also be significant fines mm. also, so it's clear. Mm. But uh, for the ports, it's for the port authorities themselves to ensure mm. that things really work, and then IMO has all these documentation of the processes. Mm. But I also want to make an, uh, an, uh, an uh, intervention here with, the, with the, the capacity of the port authority. Yes. The port authority does not necessarily need to run the facility itself. Mm. It's cheaper and better to get a private sector. So the initial process for me was the best. Mm. The capacity they need is that good understanding and supervision of the operation process. Mm. It's capacity. Right. And once they have that, they understand what it works, how to do for what, and how to do what. It's, it's, it's not enough capacity. Mm. And then with the private sector, they and then ensure that the providers have what it takes. Mm. And yeah, so that's one I think it's still, they, should, they don't have to worry that if they were doing it themselves, no? Because it frees them from a lot of issues. Mm. You have now capital that you can use to invest in other developments yeah. of, of the port. And then private sector brings in the expertise, that's the ex expectation, yeah. the expertise and the capital to install the facility. Mm. So for me, it's perfect. Yeah. It just has to do this and that. And then I also want to just hit on this point of um, the, the pre, pre, um, how do they call pre-arrangement thing yes. that brings in the customs thing? And I think the Mr. Gaze already made it clear that customs was not first yeah. interfering. Yes. So what yes, just in, in 30 seconds. Okay. What, what, what happened? Time. Time. Yeah. In any case, what is customs approving? Mm. Because they don't even know, they don't inspect for their approval. Mm. So this has to be discussed. Right. And then when the understanding is there, then it, it gets clear. There are mm. ways that customs can get involved and we can really discuss. But right. the approval is only adding on another layer of bureaucracy, mm. which makes the port expensive yeah. and makes the, proce the, the process a whole. So it may have to be looked at. I think the suspicion of all these four things there. Yeah. And also, if you have a vessel handling, sorry, a cargo truck or company handling both uh, uh, white fuel, that is a uh, processed fuel, and mm. also waste, it's a bit difficult. Let me give an example before we run off. Yeah. Sometime last year, for example, I had a call from the, the Bremen police. Mm. We had, had worked with them on some, inter uh, in, interacted in, in some projects before in the past. And they're like, yes, because the world is checking, eh? Yeah. There's this vessel, I'm not going to mention, this yeah. vessel that landed in Tema and discharged this kind of waste. Mm. We have gone to the company's website. It is not a Maple company. Right. Can you check? because we suspect that there is something wrong going on. There's some yeah. fraud. Yeah. And so it's being looked, monitored um, across the globe. You yeah. have no idea what it is. Right. So I had to get myself into investigative position, did my own checks, 
And then came out of, of course, right. the company had been really registered, mm. but was not a map pool. It, on its website, it was right. not there. Okay. So you have to be careful how we do these. So there's some kind of weakness in the processes. Right. But then, yeah, they didn't, there was okay. no fraud there. All right. Well, this is how we draw the curtain on uh, tonight's edition of Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Remember, the program has been brought to you by uh, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, uh, Goyal Company Limited, Ghana Revenue Authority, Serene Insurance, and Ghana Link Network Services, the operators of the ICOMS, Integrated Customs Management System at the course. We've been discussing uh, the provision of efficient reception facilities uh, in line with international practice uh, with a special focus on the International Convention uh, for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, the Marple 73, 72. I've been doing a discussion with Mr. Benjamin James Gazy. He is General Manager, Estate Environment, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Uh, Dr. Harry Barnes Daban, Executive Coordinator, Ports Environmental Network, Africa, PNAF. And Mr. Samuel Adi, Operations Manager, EcoStar Environmental Services Company Limited. Thanks, gentlemen, for obliging us this evening. We are grateful to have you. And uh, remember, the abridged version of the show is aired on Ghana Television every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Make a date, don't be late. I'm Kennedy Mona. See you again next week, God willing. <laughs>